Hello and welcome. This is Aceless John teaching another Android Studio tutorial. This tutorial is about XML, the basics, functions, and commands that allow you to place things and uh, move things around on your little display screen the way that you want them to be. And this is just a basic overview. Uh, there's a lot of uh, finicky bits that I'm not going to be covering, so I'm just going to cover the major uh, major commands that will be very useful to you. So let's first of all let's look at the uh, the XML itself. You see this part here at the top, XML version one, encoding. Um, that's, I mean that's important, but that's not something that we ever change. This is actually the, the declaration uh, saying that this data file is uh, built according to uh, the extended markup language standard version one, and that the characters are going to be encoded in what's called UTF-8 format. Um, so that you can use it in internationally and things of that nature. So it's it's important, but it's not something that we need to deal with. And let me see. All right. Now, if you see this file right here, you can create this file yourself. Uh, what I did was I dropped a relative layout screen basic, and then into that I dropped two other layouts: a linear layout on top and a relative layout and bottom. And then I placed text view buttons. And I called them one, two, and three. And the bottom ones I called R two, one, two, and three because they're uh, you know, relative in the relative layout. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the different uh, bits and pieces that affect uh, the actual elements within the relative and the linear layout. Uh, we're only gonna be looking at the, uh, the linear layout. <laughs> And the linear layout basically arranges all layouts next to each other, uh, element by element. And the relative layout uh, is a view that displays elements in relative positions. Um, the positions of each view can be um, specified as relative to each other. And I'll show you what that means. I've got this here, the relative three selected. Go down here, go to declaration. And this right here refers to that text view. And you can see right here that's how it's aligned layout line bottom to this other thing and it's done by reference this reference ID so that's a good thing but it also makes this difficult to deal with later on in life if you want to change the ID of any of these other buttons that are in that it's gonna mess up uh, your reference your references and so it'll make your entire uh, thing uh, go wonky because uh, I'll show you for sample if I were to come in here and see this one right here and I were to rename it, go to declaration and just say I was going to call it 22 for some reason. And then when we go back, it's it's messed us up. So that's something you need to be aware of. If you have the things ID, you need to be careful with, with the names uh, because that will mess up your referencing and your, your placing of icons and elements. Also here at the top, you'll see this XMLNS Android. And I did mention this earlier, but that has to do with the namespace, which um, means that this XML file is built according to tags, names, and rules established by Google for Android apps. Now these rules are defined um, in what's called an XML schema. And what that means to you is, is very little really. Only if you're one of those people out there who likes to create your own tags or attributes, you can't do that because this qualifies this as only able to use Google for Android app uh, tags and attributes. You're also going to run into frame layout, which we've used in my tutorials earlier. Now, frame layouts are a special case because their, their design is to block out a space on the screen to display a single item. And we've used those in my tutorials specifically to hold what's called fragments. And they only use, they only hold one element. So that's what those are specifically designed for. And while a lot of this is going to apply to both linear layouts and relative layouts, most of it is going to only be applicable to linear layouts, um, theoret I mean, realistically speaking. Because a lot of these things that we're gonna be talking about, you wouldn't even really wanna use in a relative layout. Um, so, but let us begin. First of all, we notice this one orientation horizontal. And if we'll go back into here, we see that these buttons, these 
um, text views or is arranged horizontally and indeed everything you drop into here will be arranged horizontally but if we go in here highlight that push V and it pops up the little vertical go back into our design now everything's done vertically so that is what that tag means Android orientation vertical you can change that depending on how you want to build your Android app in linear layout next let's look at uh, defining the size of your layout elements using layout width and layout height so let's go here uh, and then go to declaration and what we've got here we've got wrap content and wrap content here for width and height so let's just change this to say width of a hundred and we're going to use DP because you do have to use a measurement and wrap we're just going to uh, play place with 15 DP and then we'll go back and look at it you can see that's changed this and the height now if we do the same thing copy and paste and replace that it does the same thing across the board and indeed if we do this with relative on text views it will do the same thing in relative now one of the things I wanted to show you is what if you begin by putting too much width in say we uh, put 300 here what happens it pushes out anything that's not covered by your screen off screen so that's one of the things to look for and be aware of that if your elements become too big to be held within the screen they get kicked off the screen all right now I've taken this back down to what I originally had which is wrap content and I want to look at something called match parent now as you can tell wrap content basically wraps the content of the item of the element to the size that it needs to be for instance if we were to come in here and change this linear text to this it would come become bigger because it needs to be bigger because the content but we take that out it becomes smaller again so that's wrap content now match parent is another one that's used a lot and that does that it takes the element and matches the size of the parent which is in this case the linear layout so it makes it very big and it pushes the others right off the screen and if we change the others to match parent they're still going to be off the screen because they're just off here where you can't see them but if we were to do that and then go up here and change this from horizontal to vertical and then go back we could see the difference and this is the same thing that will happen in relative so let's go in there and look at that as an example I've gone in and basically copy and pasted that same line into my relative feet light layout and again we have the same problem but with relative we don't have the ability to turn it vertical and horizontal so it's just gonna pretty much stay messed up unless we do something else as you can see I went into my relative layout and I copied and pasted orientation to vertical and nothing happens uh, because it just that does not work with the relative layout let's turn to the layout weight if you look here I've added added Android layout weight to each line at zero and if we look at the design it, it doesn't really affect anything now if we go in here and we change this weight from zero to say one let's change it to one in each we'll see the effect that it has it equally shares the excess space and remember there was a lot of white space that wasn't over being used over here between each of the three texts but if I were to go in here and on this number three text let's say I put two you can see here that linear three gets more room and let's say I put four even more room and that's what weight does using weight for both width and height would would work pretty much as a as match parent 
So what we're just using it for is just for the width. And what it does here is it takes those weights that we assign. Let's take a look at that. Four, one, one. And it adds those weights together. And then it assigns the space minimum space required to the buttons. Then with the excess space that it has to to uh, increase the width of the item, it takes that space, it takes the element weight that we gave it and divides it by the total weight and uses that formula to assign the extra space to the bigger numbers. So it will give one part, one part, and four parts to the last part, bit. Um, it, as long as there is extra space to give. Let's say we do 55. It's going to give all this, but it's cutting. You notice that this is smaller because it's cut the extra space into much smaller pieces and given 55 pieces to linear and then one piece is one piece. So if we go 100, it will cut it into 102 pieces and you can't tell the difference because effectively it's taken everything it can away from these two and given to linear three so and it's much more dr dramatic if you can see you can see with just the smaller numbers so there that's cut it into one two three four x cutting the extra spaces into four pieces assign two of those to this one here and one there and that's how the weight works next i want to look at creating gaps between elements in the edge of the screen you do that through the layout margin commands uh, margin dimensions are floats uh, so that you could theoretically use decimal points. I don't know why you would, but you could. Uh, if you use mar margins and have uh, separate margins that join to each other, for instance, you have margin layout right 20 and then margin layout left 20, then those elements together would have a gap of 40 instead of just 20. Let's see how that looks. We'll go in here to text view and we will put in a gap at the top for that text view and then linear text view number three and we'll go back and look and you can see that I put a gap above those text views between it and the edge of the linear layout this becomes problematic when we go to our relative layout and we add the same thing to our first relative layout right here because what it's gonna do is move the whole thing down because remember these things are relative to each other so if we move one we move them all so it's less useful in relative layouts now if I were to go back into my linear 2 button and do the same thing but let's put it negative 15 it will work but in the opposite direction in effect getting rid of the button because it's completely off the screen at minus five you can see part of it so it does work negatively now for this example I have made these taller I just doubled the spot size of the height you see the linear one is crowded up into linear two into the upper left hand corner because you know that's how it fills out so say we want to put some padding in which is very similar to margins except it's on the inside so Android padding left 20 dB. Let's go see what that looks like. You can see it's moved the text over, not changed the size of the box, inside the little box. So that's that. And it has the same exact uh, ram uh, variables, uh, options as uh, variable options as margins. It's left, right, up, and uh, top and bottom. So we'll do top and it will do do that and to fix that you're gonna to have to come back in here and assign the 20 DP to each of the three text views that we're using and there that makes the uh, text all line up and that's what's causing the problem because the text was lining up not the actual boxes themselves because this is a plain text view we remove this and go back see that the text lines up with the other text but it has to move the colored box around it that we made artificially to match the other text. So that's an issue. Just be aware of it. 
Finally, I wanted to change uh, the text size itself manually through the XML, the text style, and the typeface serif, and the text color, which you can all do in the XML, as you can tell. And I'll leave some links below uh, describing uh, certain resources that you can go to and look and find more information as you go along. But that's a basic overview of some of the key things that you're going to be using within XML. This has been Ageless John teaching other Android Studio tutorial. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up and I'll see you around.